Good morning, geeks and gamers. Fresh off of Managed Democracy with Ryan Kennel last night. And look, he's smiling. Yeah. Hell Divers 2 <laughs> made him smile, ladies and gentlemen. Even it, Ryan can't hate Hell Divers 2. To be honest, I don't know how much it's Hell Divers 2 or how much I just was happy with such a massive stream. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, like that, that, that'll make me happy. But yeah, <laughs> Hell Divers was good. Good to uh, get my feet wet in the game. So yeah. Cool. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. And Ryan was uh his he revived his dead channel of uh RK Outpost <laughs> gaming. Um, Woo! Uh, How many channels yeah. is that now? Um <laughs> Uh, I don't know, like four or something. I think that's when you need an intervention when you don't even know how many channels it is. Talk, talk to this motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, that's a point. Like, uh, there were people like, where's Jeremy streaming this time? They can't even figure it out. I, hell, I don't know half the time. But uh, we are also joined for the very first time on Geeks and Gamers, Vera Dark. Welcome to G and G. Yes, thank you for the nice, warm welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time. We should have had you on a lot longer. Uh, I told That's you okay. the, the reason. So I now we're trying out. to rehabilitate our image because we hate women. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need women. <laughs> I'm just here as the diversity numbers. That's I'm right. Boosting them. Well, the chat always wins. So, and it was just a random comment, but somebody was like, uh, "We're talking about." All, I, I said like. I made a statement of like all these creators that are doing a really good job of covering a lot of the sweet baby ink stuff and the wokeness in video games and how there's a lot of creators that are getting their platforms built up over this. And somebody says, y'all been ignoring very dark for years. And I just says, you know what? Let's, uh, let's invite her on. And Steph said, yeah. I, kn I know her. Let me, let me hit her yeah. up. So, I've talked to Steph about yeah. it. She's great. Yeah. So, uh, so it's awesome to have you on and, uh, not a better time than right now with all the I craziness know. going on with all the statements out there. Um, black girl gamers sending cease and desist. Uh, we've got, uh, the, uh, niche gamer putting a weird statement out last night, uh, talking about the Elon Musk story. And then obviously Elon Musk calling out a lot of this stuff. So yeah, it's a, a good time. And of course, oh, yeah. fresh off of hell divers last night, man, man it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. I, I still uh, haven't played Hell Divers. Oh, I really, really need to. I know to. Cabrutus has been trying so hard to get me to play Hell Divers with them, and I've really got it because it looks yeah. awesome. It's it looks yeah. fantastic. You have it's to play. If I if I've played it already, you definitely need to play. <laughs> I know, I know, I do. It's like yeah. the one recent game that I just haven't gotten a chance to delve into yet. It's it's really good. It is, and it's fun with you know getting a couple of your friends, and uh, it just. It's it's an awesome game. It really Friends, is. Friends, so, what are yeah. those? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Well, yeah. we'll get you. We'll get you with the G and G crew. You can have some fun playing that game with us. So, yeah, Cabrutus totally. the legend. Yes, Cabrutus is a legend, he and uh, he's doing good work out there. He's a really good guy. Um, oh, yeah. Let's get to a couple of these super chats really quick, Ryan, and then we'll get started. Uh, we got Tomok for fifty dollars. Fifty. Jeez. That there was some good freedom last <laughs> night. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you, Tomok. Thank you for stopping by in the stream as well. Um, oh, man, look at this. We got Black Girl Magic 2.0. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> the new and improved Black Girl Magic. That looks horrific. <laughs> uh, Godzilla's Grease for Five. If you love Over the Top uh, Showa era, you're bound to have a good time with Godzilla. Godzilla X. It's Godzilla and Kong. Is that what it's supposed to be? Although yeah. it's more of a Kong movie than a Godzilla one. Um, <laughs> I'm sure uh, we'll. Yeah. I don't think I'll see it to yeah, this weekend. Why I don't not? Know. I mean, this weekend, I get. Uh, why am I gonna rush out to just see a bunch of fucking dumb animals punch each other? Like, uh, I can't, shut I can't up. Do that next week. Uh, shut <laughs> up. It's more than just dumb animals punching each other. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right. It is, which is why it sucks because the humans are fucking trash in those. Movies. I do have to agree. They need to lead less into the humans yeah. and more into the battle. That's I the thing. Agree. It's almost like the it's almost like the rise of the planet of the apes, dawn of the planet of the apes. Like I think dawn is it dawn dawn's the second one, right? Dawn's the second one yes. of planet of the apes. I think that's a damn near perfect movie, except the humans are the thing that drags that down, actually. Yeah. And I and I love Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman's one of the greatest actors ever, but it's like just yeah. quit worrying about the human element. Like it, it didn't right. matter. 
Like, um, it needs some level of the human element because they need to actually get the story going. But at the same time, I just feel like, yeah, when when half of your movie is the humans, it's just not a good ratio. Yeah. It needs to I, I be don't. like 80% monsters, 20% humans. Yep. I don't need another fucking crowbarred Millie Bobby Brown bullshit story in there. And then, and then <laughs> no, they took no. one chick who actually looked good and they chopped all her fucking hair off, gave her like an SJW haircut. <laughs> So uh, I, I like I don't know. Millie Bobby Brown's definitely been typecasted into the strong independent woman, though. That's for sure. And, and isn't she like isn't she in her forties at this point for yes. her next Stranger Things role? It's so weird. <laughs> like yeah. it's, the it's final hard. season of Stranger Things is going to be them getting their AARP cards. <laughs> <laughs> even though you haven't even seen Stranger Things yet. No, I haven't. But what? I can still make the joke. Oh he my has gosh. It. The first two seasons were really good. You I haven't agree. played Hell Divers. <laughs> okay, true, true. Yeah. But I have seen like uh, 30 hours of it. So I know what Hell Divers is. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Now, Stranger Things season one, I will argue, is like a damn near perfect season of television. And season two, Outside of that one episode, and Barry, you know what I'm talking about. There's that one weird episode that's like episode seven of season two. It's like completely throws it out of whack with like all those like weird the van, the, the chick that's driving the van, the black girl, and it completely oh, it yeah. jumps off. of It makes no they sense tried towards to go the overall like the, story. The sister storyline yes. we're talking about where yes. she's got like this punk rock sister yes. who mm -hmm. is also has was also experimented on, but then they just completely disregard her going forward. It's yeah. like, bye. Story Everybody line's hated done. that. It Everybody so, hated that it was one. So forced because i thought that that would be really cool if she had showed back up but she never did yep they moved away from that quickly um all right let's uh let's jump right into this uh statement now this is a site that i'm, I'm not gonna say i know a ton about them but i've heard good things about them and it looks like my chrome is gonna crash again ryan so i'm gonna have to come right back in it looks like god damn it i had the niche gamer article pulled up why does my chrome always crash on stream yards it's uh, going to crash well, so there's nothing I can do. I'm literally it, just waiting. It will happen eventually. So we'll just read a couple super chats. Jesus and we'll fucking we'll chat. Chrome. Just try not to make a retarded <laughs> face by the time. I you, know. Uh, I'm I'm waiting. Yeah. Don't talk at all. If you talk, you'll you know might be liable to open your mouth. I'm not um, get, I don't want to get clipped. It's like when you used to play like Xbox 360 and it wouldn't load the game, so you just yes. act like you were ignoring it. Like ah, I got something else to do, and then hoping that it would work. Yeah. I, I find like when I if you just get really angry at it, Jeremy, that's when it'll probably start working. That's what happens to me at red lights. Like I have <laughs> I have to wait at a red light just until I lose my shit. And then as soon as I lose my shit, there's Jeremy. He's uh he's frozen there. So oh, man. I'm sure he'll be back. Um, Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> bye. Bye, Jeremy. Uh <laughs> green haired anti liberal member for two years. R.I.P. Chappie. Also, please shame Dermy, Wormy, and Mr. Bug for not having seen Iron Eagle 1 and 2. Thank you, Greenhead Anti-Liberal. Andrew CR for 2,500. How many dudes did the diddler diddle if he indeed did diddle dudes? Uh, it sounds like uh, wow. you're asking about P. Diddy there. Um, and I think the number is a lot. I think probably. The, probably too many for one lawsuit to hold. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lance Finn, member for nine months. Who is that hot black chick on the thumbnail? Uh, if you think <laughs> if you think that chick is hot, then uh, go for it. Uh, go Needs for glasses it. ASAP. What do you think of the whole Diddy thing? Have you been paying attention to that at all? I have paid a little bit of attention. It's honestly hilarious to me just how he's just getting away. He had a plan, but obviously it in totality is just it definitely doesn't bode in his favor with all the news that's come out. Seems yeah. like he was a real piece of trash, but it's still kind of funny to see him just fade into the sunset. It seeing all these like videos come out from like 15 or 20 years ago, him recording with random people. Yeah. And now, like the stuff they were saying, the way they were yeah. acting. Yeah. Like in retrospect, you look back, you're like, holy fuck, what was right. going on there? Yeah. But Jeremy's back. I am back. I'm back. Yeah. I knew it was going to happen. So I didn't make the most retarded face. Uh, so I probably won't get memed too bad. Uh, it can't be as bad as that clip that uh, Quarter Black shared of uh, Gary. Uh, did you see that one? Gary's like just screaming. Uh, <laughs> it's so, it's so I don't know funny. if I saw the, I saw a couple of video, uh, several screenshots. But... Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's a screenshot. Yeah. Gary's like, so good. <laughs> I'm going to use that in one of my next thumbnails. I, I wonder, here's my question. 
Who's better clickbait, Sydney Sweeney or Gary in your thumbnail? That's a legitimate question. I think Gary. You think Gary's better clickbait than maybe, Sydney? Probably. Maybe put, maybe put Sydney Sweeney's tits on Gary and try that <laughs> for a thumbnail. <laughs> That's a cursed image. I'm just saying, just experiment, see what happens. <laughs> that is cursed. Uh, honestly. If uh, Krista Nova, she's listening, that's going to be the next project on the thumbnail. We're going to put Gary's face on Sydney Sweeney, uh, uh, and we're going to see if that, like, for my next video that I make, we're going to talk about that. Um, I think that will be perfect. Just wait. Just tell Gary to tweet out uh, Miles Morales is Miles Morales or something. <laughs> wait till a bunch of people freak <laughs> yep. out. Do a video that's saying Gary's under attack. And use that in the thumbnail. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, we'll do that. Okay, let's get into this right here. So this statement was made yesterday, late last night, I feel like. Um, what was it? So it was 7.57. So after we got off the stream, I saw this. Now, uh, Niche Gamer is not a, a site that I've heard people say a lot of good stuff about. Uh, I, yeah. Vera, you're familiar with them, I think, aren't I am. you? Yeah, and, I, I reference them quite a bit in my videos. Yeah, and and of course, uh, this is all in response to Elon Musk's tweet that says it should not be acceptable for any company in, in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist against white guys. They re, they quote tweet this, and this the response is very confusing to me. I don't understand why they even made this statement because this makes them look bad this makes them look really bad um yeah. it says while we agree uh with the base sentiment of gaming companies overplaying their hands per se unfortunately we can't cover this particular story or more stories like it without potentially getting punished by the pr firms hired by the same game companies who we have to rely on to get access to video games for reviews and coverage purposes ranging from smaller devs to to mid-size operations, to even AAA game companies and publishers alike. Because a lot of those same PR people support the people who hold these similar views, like what Elon is referring to here. We're already having significant issues and experiencing roadblocks regarding getting access to AAA titles because we have covered the Sweet Baby Inc. stories alone. It's quite unfortunate. This is such a strange response. It really is. It, the, the reason it's weird is because Niche Gamer, th these are typically the stories that you see from them that you don't see from the mainstream. They are not like mainstream. Right? Exactly. They, for like a couple hours ago, they talked about something we're going to talk about later, which is black girl gamers threatening lawsuits yep. to that park right. place. Like th this is stuff that they have covered historically. And it, they, they don't cover it from a, hey, we're going to slam these people. They simply bring eyes to it. But they're people that typically do it in, in a way that you never see happen in mainstream. So it's it's a weird thing, especially to put it on top of this Elon statement. I feel like it's a really weird vibe from them. And I don't quite understand why they're doing it. Yeah, no, and I completely agree because I use Niche Gamer's website a lot because they are one of the few websites that talks about censorship in the gaming industry. And that, when they're doing that, they're calling out companies like Capcom, Bandai Namco. They're calling out some of the bigger gaming companies. And so you would think just by doing that, they're basically already on their shit list. So why would you now come out and say that well we're trying our best to stay on their good sides when just by covering what they have been covering they are automatically on their shit list they are no longer in their good graces yeah and absolutely. now all they're really doing is pushing away people who previously used their site because they were not the mainstream because they were willing to cover topics that the mainstream refused to and if the mainstream covers things like censorship they just call us all perverts and say that we should go jack off and watch porn instead which of course is absurd but they are one of the few sites that doesn't do that and covers those things and their audience is not going to take a statement like this positively at all whatsoever
No, they're not. And I want to no. pull up your tweet right here. Um, so you had a pretty good response to this. So do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, sure. It says Xbox, PlayStation, Warner Bros. Games, Square Enix, Capcom, Ubisoft, Bandai, Amazon. These are all companies that over the years I have received denials from for game codes because, of course, games get expensive going from 60 to $70. Sometimes, like two weeks ago, there were three major releases that came out on the same day. So as a con content creator, it's great to be able to get codes, but the problem is that they will not give me codes. I have been blacklisted by these companies for years at this point, and they d either don't give a response or they say, well, your reach isn't that good, but they have given codes to creators with reaches far smaller than mine. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying I have like a million subscriber channel, but my channel is gaming focused and they deny me because I criticize their business practices. And, you know, when it comes to the niche gamer post, you know, I, I, I definitely obviously completely understand they want to be able to receive codes and they want to be able to receive press releases, but is it worth it to trade your audience who trusts you for a few game codes when you could go out and just spend the 60 or $70 on a code yourself? In my opinion, at least, it's just not worth breaking that trust. Agreed. And especially when I could get a code from them, but then they say, well, you know, we want you to say things in a specific way or we want you to obviously lean into positivity like that just to me is so gross and I've never taken codes for games where they've even hinted at well there might be some rules in place if you were to cover that uh very well said so Ryan what do you think here what do you think now I saw Dermy Wormy said do they have a clarification tweet out I didn't they, they, they do they, they put okay, it out today it so okay. yeah. I haven't made seen this, this one yet we made this post last night because we're fed up of the status quo. To anyone saying we're bending the knee, this post is to say we're not. Making the post will already irritate the people causing us issues, and it's time we stop placating them. We're committed to free exp expression and enthusiastic or enthusiast press. That means we want people to make and play the games they want to play. We want to share the news you care about. That's what we stand for, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, but again, it's, it, it's weird to say this after saying I'm not going to cover this. Yeah. Right. They, they're saying they're not going to bend the knee. But in their previous post, they said that they were partially at least yes. bending I, the I, knee. I, I guess if you if you really if you read it from that context. Right. Unfortunately, we can't cover this particular story or more stories like it without potentially getting punished by the PR firms. So like uh, I. I if you read it from, if you give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt, maybe what they're saying is it's unfortunate that we can't cover this without getting punished, but we're going right. to continue to cover it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Um, so it could be taken from that perspective, but certainly it got a lot of attention last night. Yeah. And I saw like they were responding to someone in the comments and, you know, a relatively small group of people. They don't have, uh, I mean, again, I don't know a lot about them, but I've, I've seen them referenced a few times. And I mean, at the end of the day, if people are out there, calling stuff out and covering stuff. And as Vera said, you know, they, they've been doing that at this website. It, it does show like everybody's not in the fight like we are on a day-to-day -day basis. And maybe they're finally yeah. coming to the reality of, uh, hey, you can't play both sides in this game right now. Like you're either, you're either a uh, controlled by them completely or you're going to call them out. And as my tweet, uh, let me see if I can pull my tweet up really quick. I, I basically said, um, this right here. I said, uh, this is a strange response that ultimately won't help them keep access. Bottom line, if you bend the knee in any capacity, they own you forever. Uh, forever. Either shill for that access and stay quiet or call the bullshit out and live with being called racist and sexist like we do. Uh, yeah. The fans will figure out who's authentic and who isn't. And um, it's just a strange kind of comment overall. Hopefully they get it worked out. They seem like they're I, nice people. They I, seem I, like they're decent people. I, I feel like, like in this case, because of what we've seen over the last like decade, I, I feel like you can kind of give them the benefit of the doubt um, in terms of what they were saying and what they've continued to talk about. I mean, right. like th they were covering shit when Last of Us Two was happening, you know, four right. years ago to us and stuff like that. So I the only yeah, the only ahead. thing I will not give them is that 
while I use them and I reference them and currently in the state that they are, they have been really good. They have been accused on three occasions by Jamatsu of plagiarizing their press releases. And so one of the big things they highlight in that initial post is press releases. Press releases are not the end of the world. Press releases are just information that says, oh, hey, this is the release date. And yes, you might be getting it early. So your article on it goes up at the same time as all of the other news outlets. But at the same, but, but, but it's like, is that really what you're willing to trade the trust you have with your with your viewers over is a press release? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just don't think that that's a fair trade off, especially when niche gamer has been around for so long. They've gotten so much attention and they do really good work. Yeah, I mean, and that's an interesting uh, – the way the way they handle this is going to determine their future because – and I've already seen like they're responding to people right now. I never think it's a good idea for an actual brand to respond as an individual. I yeah. hate that, and that's yeah. what they're doing right now, and it's a bad precedent to set. It's like I say with – look, anybody – G and G on their personal account can say whatever the fuck they want. I don't care. Yeah. The actual Geeks and Gamers Twitter account – has no opinion. It's not going to respond oh, yeah, to people. No. It's not going to be like, oh, well, check. The, it just has no opinion. And they are responding in, in ways that it seems like they're potentially going to get caught up. If you get caught up in the Twitter, um, you know, shit show, you're only going to end up making yourself look bad. So I guess we're going to see what happens. But for those of you that are asking, um, this is uh, Vera Dark. She is a content creator. She's got a great channel. Uh, you've been around for a long time. How long have you yeah. been doing the, the YouTube uh, stuff for? I've been doing YouTube for like four-ish, four and a half years. But I, over the past like two and a half, have gone to full-time, you know, 20 hours of streams every week, uh, three videos a day. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. And uh, we'll be dropping links to her, her channel. So if you guys want to go subscribe, check her out. And if you want to see her more, just let us know. Um, Ryan, we got some supers. We we do. I'll catch up on some of them. Slag Lust for Canadian 10. <laughs> Dillard Draws partner with an Ed Piscor type. Now his 40% payday shrinking daily. His info on his partner's past lolly support comes out in a comic he was told would come out four months ago. I have almost no idea what you're talking about. Uh, so, but <laughs> yeah. thank you. Uh, Dirty Jersey member for 10 months. Hail Very Dark and welcome. This is long overdue. Absolutely. Yeah, true. You guys have been so mean to me, not inviting <laughs> me on. How could you do this? Well, now you're stuck with us, so get yeah. used to it. And you get ready for some of these weird-ass super chats that are going to start rolling in because nah, we, okay. we got some fucked-up weirdos in our audience. We love <laughs> yeah, them. Sorry. Speaking of fucked-up weirdos, here's our furry <laughs> Tobias. Uh, <laughs> Tobias uh, for 10 bucks. Would have watched you guys playing, but I was getting an ultrasound for my anemia. Ooh. Not quite sure how it works. Something about possible ulcers, but I got to play more last night after it. Um, well, that doesn't sound good, Tobias. It doesn't sound good at yeah. all. Um, I hope the vet takes care of you, buddy. Um, El Poncho Libre for Hi, 20 Poncho. says, Freedom, Veraverse Hi. clan is here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Take her for two. If you use Twitter, you're a hell diver. <laughs> yeah. Gen X memories. RTR, didn't that game kick ass, Jeremy? Uh, I didn't catch it, but I saw a lot of the highlights. So, roll okay. tide roll. Uh, MJUK84 for Canadian Five. Happy Figgin' Birthday Month, Jeremy. You're the <laughs> biggest fig to ever fig in Fig Town. Yeah, I've got I've got a few days left in my birthday month. So if you still want to send super chats to help me celebrate, because again, that's the drunk three PO fear the beardo mentality of like they're the only the men female, that female birthday attitude. Yeah, they're the only men that celebrate the entire month um, as for their birthday, <laughs> and then they do like the pre birthday stream. The yeah, -birthday stream. why not? I'm like, dude, the grifting is off the charts. Uh, yeah. But speaking of grifting off the charts, guess who just dropped 50 gifted memberships? Jeez. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's <laughs> finger who don't miss. He uh. don't miss 50 gifted memberships just for my birthday month. Thank you, Alec Baldwin's finger. You mad lad. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, there it is. Alec Baldwin's <laughs> picture. <finger>. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm excited to see that trial come to come to a fruition oh yeah that'll be yeah. really interesting because i feel like there's going to be a lot of shenanigans with it yep 
It was art, like even the armorers one. I feel like exposed a lot of shit that he was doing on oh, yeah. set that was. Uh, it's not going to be good for him in his trial. Oh yeah, he just didn't give a fuck on set. No, he's uh, like, hurry, 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 load, 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 right. load, load again. It's <laughs> right. like, he's like fucking crazy. I really like. I don't know if I can play it. I think I played it one time on Cobra Cast, but because you know how much he hates Trump, like it's bad. His his TDS yeah. is out of control. Yeah. And there's a clip of his brother on The Apprentice. Uh, is it is it Stephen Baldwin? Is that the one that's kind of like a Christian and everything? So I think so. Their mother is madly in love with Donald Trump. She was like going crazy. He was having a conversation with his mom about how much she's like, I hope he leaves his wife for me and all this. And tell me how handsome he is. <laughs> Whoa. The delusion. <laughs> Imagine if Trump if Trump fucked Alec Baldwin's mother. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I bet she bought. I bet she bought 50 of the Trump Bibles. Yes. <laughs> Imagine uh, Alec Baldwin like visiting his mom and he she gets told a story about Trump grabbing her by the pussy <laughs> and it just triggers the <laughs> fuck out of him. That that's why he was so angry on set that day. He found out what Trump did. Uh, Max Falcon Ridge for Canadian 279. Great streams. Jeremy did well as private pile. Thank you. There you go. Hephaestus rising for five. Ryan. I've been revisiting the Jedi Apprentice series. It's so depressing. We haven't gotten anything on that level of storytelling in live action. Yeah, it's almost like you had the uh, the template laid out in front of you, a bunch of stories you could adapt, and they decided to throw it in the trash and let Dave Filoni butt fuck the carcass. Uh, so uh, that's what we have now. Yeah. Tobias for five. Didn't you watch the original Godzilla films? Humans are usually the focus uh, with whatever silliness they do to move the story. Then we get the stars. Yeah. The, the thing with the um, a lot of these movies is that the, they put the humans in there, but they don't really have a reason for them to be there. They're just there to fill a void or a role. Like, whereas Godzilla Minus One, which no one saw that being so great, and it was amazing, best film of the year. Um, and the human element there actually carried the story even further, and, mm -hmm. and it yeah. mattered. Whereas a lot of these are just like, these, especially these more modern Godzilla films, you're just... Well, we need humans in there because we need a star to to market the movie. So we need right. to put their name on it. And so they're just kind of wasted in the role. Yeah. And that's really the problem with it. Oh, yeah, definitely. To Olgi to assault. <laughs> Leslie Hedlund says one of us. Uh, Thank you. Be Beardo put that on the, the daily that him and Jay ran. And Beardo put her, that picture, and Sydney Sweeney on the thumbnail. <laughs> Which way, Western man? <laughs> God. Uh, sundowners for 20 bucks. So, man, watch Three Body Problem. I'll never get those eight hours back. It's boring as hell. Could have cared less about the characters. That's uh, that, that's D&D's first thing. That's since dumb and dumber. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've heard I've heard differing things about it. It is it's an adaptation of a pre-existing yeah. show or story or something. Yeah, um, of a book. And it's not yeah. um it's not extremely it doesn't follow everything one to one and that's I think why a lot of people are very mixed on it because they try to follow obviously the existing content while also differing it which is always can go it can go really well in some cases and then in other cases it leads to a situation like this where if you've never read the book and you've never seen the original material then you might like it and then you know when you dive deeper into it you think it's it's just okay now was there already an adaptation of that like um, uh, a uh like a chinese or japanese or some shit or was this the I, first one they've done i believe so three body yeah. problem adaptation I, there I was, a, Chin there was yeah. a chinese version of the show but i don't think that there was ever another one okay yeah no it was just the chinese um i see you guys rolling in with uh super chats like crazy we will get to all of them another story that i want to talk about really quickly ryan's favorite topic is it black women? Black girl gamers. Oh, God. Black girl Ooh. gamers have uh, officially sent a cease and desist to John Trent. Um, this is WDW Pro. And it says, as our attorney Ron Coleman stated yesterday, John Trent received a cease and desist from Black Girl Gamers. Uh, that cease and desist goes farther than anything I have personally ever seen in Chilling Freedom of the Press. The response starts Sunday with Valiant Renegade. 
If you don't know, Black Girl Gamers put out a statement uh, going after that part place, saying that they were uh, that part place and John F. Trent, who used to be with Bounding Into Comics, is now with that part place, basically exposed them for their discriminatory hiring practices. And they had a problem with that. And I have this clip. This is fucking hilarious. This is from Asmund Gold right here. This puts it in perspective. This really does. To now gaming companies threatening legal action. Sweet Baby Inc. style consulting company Black Girl Gamers threatens legal action over that Park Place gaming website over defamatory allegations. They go to say that they will pursue legal action against anyone who links to the Park Place's article or spreads it in any manner. I want to read it. I want to see if my... So, so anyone that links to that Park Place's article or spreads it in any <laughs> manner, keep that in mind. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. yeah now keep, keep that in mind. Yeah. As Gentlemen, it continues. It has been a privilege. This is so funny. Tonight. This is so funny. Because like whenever I like this is I'm the kind of person that's like, you know, you got a spidey sense. I have a common sense. I feel like this is so extreme. I don't believe it. We're addressing recent applications uh, published on that park place about discriminatory hiring practices within black girl gamers. These claims of us are false and prior to fact checking or verification from our representatives. Uh, where's the content creator part? Uh, content creators who reshared the false allegations against about our organization. We will continue to pursue further action against anyone who persists in spreading false and defamatory information against black girl gamers. But well, wouldn't that mean that they're suing themselves because they link to it themselves? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't link the website. You go yeah. to the website. This is the website. It literally <laughs> yeah. is the website that they're telling people not to talk about. I wonder who wrote this. I, I'm sure it's someone who's really smart. <laughs> How do you do this to yourself? Dude, this is absolutely gorgeous so <laughs> they're threatening you if you share the article and links back to the story that's defaming them while they're actively sharing the link themselves yep. holy <laughs> shit which, which is like first of all bullshit right yes. you you have oh, yeah. no to go after anybody that comes across not. something on the internet and shares it's like wow what a crazy story puts it out right. there like, there is no cause for that whatsoever it's just a bunch of bullshit oh, it's yeah. like it's well i i can't say uh, i can't say what i want to say <laughs> oh, i'll just pass it on go ahead jeremy what do you got no no yeah i mean absolutely i think this is going to blow up in their face um and the um the backlash is going to be monumental I have no case whatsoever. And now, oh, uh, no. it, they, now again, I'm not an attorney. Okay. So I'm just giving you my you opinion say. on this. So, but like Ron Coleman, they've got Ron Coleman, uh, that's going to be handling this uh, through their statement that they've made here on Twitter. Um, and even like Asmund Gold said it, like, who wrote this? This, this, this is so sloppy. Plus, it, they're sending it to John F. Trent. Right. They didn't even send it to that park place. Like they, they don't even know who runs the goddamn website. Right. They, they can't sue over the truth. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. <laughs> well, and, and even and even what they said, it was it was very clearly taking a tweet that they put out saying yeah. it appears to be that this is how they go about finding people. And that tweet specifically said, Hey, we're looking for black female <laughs> content right. creators right. for our D and D shit. Right? Right. Like that's what they themselves put out. Now again. Three weeks after that, they put out another tweet. Hey, we're looking for content creators for Dungeon Dragons. Had to clarify for all backgrounds, probably because they couldn't find enough black women that actually wanted to work for them that play oh, D and D. I can't do you believe have that. that. Do you have that pulled up? I know you had it pulled up yesterday. That is fucking hilarious. They put this out. They're like <laughs> looking for black girls to play D and D, and then what? A week passes or whatever, and no one three responded. Weeks. Three weeks yeah, passes, yeah. And like no one responded, <laughs> and so they're like we're looking for content creators for Dungeon Dragons. By the way, FYI, this is for all backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that now that no black women are qualified or interested or whatever, we're open up to all the whiteies too. And I'm oh, sure right. they got flooded with requests, but yeah, no black girls. Yeah, no, and, and and when and when it comes to this, you know, it's it obviously it's hilarious to see them try this, but they're not defamatory allegations when they're the truth, or it's at least evidence which points to the case being the truth, even if we don't have the full picture. And Trent even said, if you want me to issue clarifications, let's have a discussion about it. And mm -hmm. of course, they didn't because that's how these people work. They don't actually want to have a conversation about it. They just want to say, you're evil, you're a sexist or a bigot or all of these different 
different things, but they don't want to have a conversation when that you have someone who is more than willing to sit down and talk with you about it. Yep. Very well said. And so Ryan also, uh, there was, a something you had said the other day about this. Gosh, it was a follow-up question I had. I can't remember. There was something you had, had said in, in terms of this, and I can't remember now. But ultimately, what we will see moving forward is a lot of YouTube content creators are going to make content off this. They're going to capitalize off of yeah. this. And I, what I believe will ultimately happen is that Black Girl Gamers, this is my prediction, okay? It's my prediction that I think that they will end up uh, going away, they will delete their account and they will kind of rebrand as something else and still run with the same kind of narratives that they're pushing. But it's like you're putting a direct target on your own brand if you're saying that we, the company called Black Girl Gamers, is not discriminating against people based off race and gender. If yeah. when you're putting statements out there, saying it it's amazing it even says on their webpage it's 100 percent minority owned <laughs> yes. and they go through the statistics of like 78 percent of of this team are minorities and and all these different things and it's like how can okay how can you sue for the truth like you have it black and white on your website what you are doing well, not really white, but definitely in black. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, and it's not just 100% minority owned. Their website claims they're 100% minority operated. Right, yeah. right, which, right. Which is, I've never even heard anything like that before. <laughs> right. Probably because no business could function that way. <laughs> right. But, but it, it is, it's just pretty evident. I don't know if they're going to like disappear and rebrand. I think this is, they're just going to fucking not they're just gonna get fucking destroyed for a while and eventually this is not some like small tiny group it is yeah, they have no. a fairly big following they've been around for a while i think they have a lot of connections in the industry so. i think what they will do is they will keep going for a couple of months and then they will disappear but all of them you'll have like team a that will go to a sweet baby team b that will go to like another narrative company and they'll just split those groups up and then in a couple years they'll just reform black girl gamers under something else yeah so, like, they're not leaving the industry for a bunch of time but they also were no longer under that name yeah that makes sense it i look, mean it, that's oh. that they were the ones who ended up doing forespoken and made all of the changes in forespoken and led it to the disaster it was i mean luminous studios who that was their first triple a project project they ended up closing down because of forespoken and that in part was because of black girl gamers very well said oh we we covered that uh yeah. <clears throat> that that trailer uh over on uh remember that on ign and the whole comment section was like Ooh. sbi detected yeah. sbi detected yeah like, it, and it, this is all because of Cabrutus and everything that's happened there. And of course, Sweet Baby Inc. actually trying to get that whole thing taken down. And it's just gone nuclear. And now Gamergate 2, uh, I saw Yellow Flash in the chat earlier saying, you know, Gamergate 2 has gone nuclear and it's true. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you get Lee McGovern's 10 gifted memberships, Ryan? I didn't. Lee McGovern with 10 gifted memberships. Thank you so much. And of course, we do have a great audience here, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Rumble. We appreciate it. Nearly 4,000 people here. We're joined by Vera Dark, and she's uh, demanded. She sent a cease and desist and said, if you That's don't bring me, me on Geeks and Gamers, <laughs> you're a racist and sexist. That's so, me. Um, yes. But no, it's, uh, it's been all, it's awesome to have you on finally. And uh, probably not the last time you're going to see her on. Oh G &G. yeah, no, probably not. So, but do you play? Do you play Mario Kart? I do play Mario Kart. Oh yeah. boy, that's yeah. that's that's going to be the. Yeah. When I had went to the Tim Cast compound and I was on Pop Culture Crisis, I ended up playing with Gamer Maids. I played a bunch of hours of. Okay. Uh, yeah. All Mario right. Kart. To bring her on the Mario Kart streams and where everybody cusses each other out. So Yoshi yeah. supremacy. Oh, look at there. All yeah. right. And I, I use my me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, cursed image. Hey, listen, no. uh, I, I finally, finally, I am not misogynist. I'm not True. misogynist. True. Today is a historical finally did day. It. Forget all the other virtue signaling I've been doing with all the minorities and women on this channel. We finally yep. reached that point. Yep. Very dark. So. Yep. Um, all right, Ryan, let's catch up. All right. Uh, 
Keenan Endahu, Endanu. Did you see the movie Green Room starring Anton Yelchin? Uh, no. No. I, no. I've heard, I have heard of that one, though. I still am freaked out by the fact that that dude died the way he did, man. Uh, he got like, put pinned, car in park. pinned behind yeah. his car. Like, the car rolled down a hill and pinned him and killed him. It's so I feel like. I feel like Diddy was involved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lord Botha for five. Millie Bobby Brown recently said she doesn't watch movies either. She can't sit down and pay attention for that long. She probably doesn't read uh, two. You know who just actually passed away? Louis Gossett Jr. Yes. Yeah, yeah really. that morning, was sad. Man. Yeah. RIP was like 87. 87. Yeah, 87. Yeah. 87. Yeah. He was older. Legend. Legend. Oh, yeah. Absolute legend. Few souls for five. It's awesome to see Vera on here. Hail. Appreciate you all for staying on top of the nonsense and calling out the crazies. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Diddy diddle for five. <laughs> uh, did y'all hear about the bridge in Baltimore? Crazy stuff. Not much else going on in the news. <laughs> Nothing at all. No. Uh, Grandmaster Chris for five. How dark can Vera Dark be if Vera Dark could see in the dark? Hi, Vera and Ryan. Not so much, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, I like his Ryan. profile picture. His profile picture is awesome. <laughs> Chad. Just, just chilling. Yeah. Uh, we got that one. Thank you, Dermy, for, for letting mm -hmm. us know. Dark Side Droids. Niche Gamer obviously received a cease and desist letter or two recently. This is the only thing that makes. I mean, maybe. Sense. I mean, they haven't said anything like that. So, I mean, th but there's also, you know, that possibility that their Sweet Baby articles got them in trouble. And now maybe Sweet Baby is going after companies. But we at least know that Black Girl Gamers is going after journalists. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And it's going to backfire completely. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, uh, they just. This is only going like the people that they are going after are used to this type of stuff. And so all you're essentially doing is kind of confirming a lot of the things that people already feel about a lot of this stuff in terms of silencing people, silencing critics. All that's going to do is just motivate the audience and the creators to just continue to do exactly what they're doing. Oh, yeah. And it's going to backfire massively. Yeah. Epically. Uh, Sadakar 7th Legion for 50 pounds. Ooh. I followed you for many years. Still think you kind of cheat on Mario Kart. Also, <laughs> I actually got you on Fortnite. I shouted so loud, my Akita thought we were under attack. <laughs> LOL. Still, best stream was when you and Gary met up that car stream gold. Oh, that's awesome. How do I cheat on Mario Kart? I don't understand. By the way, I'm losing my voice. I've been streaming so much lately and making so many videos. I'm losing my voice. But uh, yeah, how do I cheat on Mario Kart? I'm just that good. All right. It's that simple. I'm just that good. Uh, Hailstorm, it hacks. And he's not even that good. And he hacks the game. His hack isn't even hack. He just Damn. fucking slows down and gets 12th place to get all the best items and fucks everyone's day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Exalted Patriarch for five. Hail inwards and our figurehead. Or our fig, your head, Jeremy. Get that <laughs> DJT stonk and roll tight. See on FNT. Yeah, everybody's wanting me to buy like uh, Trump's uh, true social stock. I'm like, I don't know anything about the stock market. Obviously, I would love to, you know, go out and support my boy, but I don't, I don't know anything about it. And everybody's saying it's like the GameStop stock situation. You know, oh, yeah, the game stocks uh, that absolutely yeah. blew up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. Filthy casual for five. The Halo show is so bad. I got enough subs views to get monetized. I oh. wanted to give you some of the profit. I'll need a refund for this. How uh -huh, could they man. massacre my boy like that? I didn't even watch. The, oh. Like no one's talking about the second season second because virtually season, no one came right. back for it. Right. Because yeah. the first season was just so terrible. Nobody wants to see master cheeks. Okay. That's Nobody. just not what people want. No, I, I've I watched. I think did I watch the second episode? I can't. I watched one, maybe two episodes of the first season, and I was out immediately. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, and it I only have not got watched worse. anything. Yeah, and now apparently season two is even worse than because I've heard Epic Mike and a few others complaining about it. Lethal Lightning. Um, He's like not in his armor at all. <laughs> like no, the entire no. fucking season. It's so bad. Yeah. Um, Chris Benoit for ten bucks says. Hey, Vera, I'm oh, trying no. to get into gaming to oh, bond no. with my young son. 
I haven't been the best dad in the past, so I want to make it up to him. Any good games for a young child to play? I would definitely recommend Nintendo Switch because there are so many good games like Splatoon, Mario, um, you know, Minecraft's a great game. I would definitely lean into the Nintendo Switch for I a younger a younger child i do agree uh now now that you've uh gotten through the initiation process the, that's a troll that always happens to our creators <laughs> so uh yeah. chris benoit is a former pro professional wrestler who's no longer with us and he took his own life and his family's life uh yeah. if chrissy mayer <gasps> chrissy mayer gave like a 25 minute passionate response to him one time yeah chris mayer never responds to super chats in that depth he's like Hey Chrissy, uh, we're gonna get back <laughs> into the dating scene. My uh, my kid's no longer in the picture, and Chrissy goes on like this long, like passionate discussion. Like, okay, your kid's not in the picture. That's great. And oh, it was so bad. Got <laughs> yeah. Then Dan Vask, Dan Vask got the question one time, and it was him and Drunk Three PO were hosting this show, and Jay was trying to like interrupt dan to tell him it's a troll and dan's like shut up let me answer the man and so <laughs> yeah. then dan starts answering okay. and then later he finds out it's happened to everybody so there we go well but good it is answer. what it is it's a good answer though it's a good answer <laughs> there you go yes shout out chris benoit somehow returns from the grave every time we have a guest um peter hewitt for two jeremy do you want p diddley's bbc for your b-day uh, I'll pass. I'll pass. But, um, you know, thanks, I guess. You know, you know who keeps trying to get me? So, uh, Vera, um, this is like a month ago. And this is the first time Ryan had actually respected me. But someone sent a super and chat. Last. <laughs> someone sent a super chat. And his name is Munchie Ninja. Uh, For some uh. reason, I said Munchie. And I used another N word. The ends in an A. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oops. I've never said that word before ever. I promise. It's the first time. Never said it during traffic or anything like that. I never said so, it to every rap song I've yeah. ever sang along to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is Dan Vask in the chat? We got to find that is. clip. Dan, do you know where the clip is of you getting trolled by Benoit? I want to pull that up and play it if you if you have it. Send it to me on Twitter if you have it. Or uh Steph, Steph can find it. Uh, all the more gooder for five. Vera is one of my three favorite toxic white male streamers. That's me. Oh, alongside Jane Theory and Hijabi Gamer. Uh, there you go. Cliff for 199. Keep being awesome, guys. Have a good Friday. It is a good, good Friday. Jeremy's so proud of his insulin. And look who shows up. Right. Munchy Ninja. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> uh Dan Detmer for 10. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. I agree. Mm -hmm. Um, unlimited power. Did the new guy get a transition? Who's this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, this is not Beardo Trans. No, thank God. <laughs> this is for you guys who don't know, they're just joining this Vera Dark. She's been you got, I think the first time that we maybe interacted was during was it during the last of us stuff yeah yeah it, it had definitely to had to have been yeah all the naughty dog strike. Strike. you got yeah, hit yeah. during that too didn't you oh Baron? yeah did you get oh, hit you yeah. get a strike yeah. yeah i didn't get a strike but all like all my videos on it ended up being like demonetized okay. and it was not a good situation but no i mean like ryan had two active strikes on yeah. his channel yeah. and he had gotten us a strike on geeks and gamers play and then i got a strike here on the main channel and all of this is going on that i know as got hit manix uh there's a few other creators out there all dealing with these strikes and i remember talking to ryan and your channel what'd you have you have like fifty thousand subs at the time no 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 i had like Five thousand. So really, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. I was really was very a, a early, pretty small then. channel at the okay. time. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I remember we were like every day. You're like, ah, might be my last upload, but I'm gonna do it. Third, <laughs> yeah. third strike means you're done. You know, they'll take yep. your channel down for that. And uh yeah, it was. It was a wild time. Yeah. Uh, sup, man. For two, Seth Rogen gonna write write an R-rated Venom animation. God help us all. Oof. um chris benoit for two i like the idea of using a switch with my kid i'm sure you do <laughs> um <laughs> somebody get the dan vass clip for me if you got it somebody. dark lion productions for 75 hungarian i don't know what the fuck that is uh just notice 
Wakanda forever is Tyler Perry's Medea Diary of a Mad Black Woman with Disney budget. I'm still disappointed in that movie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're hanging on to that <laughs> fucking six years later. Uh, Destructor disc, member for six months. Damn it, who didn't Diddy Diddle? That's the real question. That is the real question. Tra Travis Schiffler, R.I.P. Terry Funk. R.I.P. Um, legend, hardcore legend right there. Chris B., R.I.P. Lewis Gossett Jr., great actor with long legacy, great performances in film and television. We'll miss you, Chappie. Yeah, so sad. Um, Ryan, did you see the, the clip that Sophie put together about the sign? What sign? I'm going to show you. She's in the chat. I saw her. She's happy that uh, Vera's here. So this was uh, this is from Sophie right here. All right, she put this together. Let's share this tab right here. Here we go. Fellowship signs, okay. Uh, Sophie says, you're a Pisces like me. I finally feel seen. Oh. I'm going to be honest with you. No offense to anybody. I don't give a fuck about my sign, okay? I've had people ask me, like, <laughs> what's your sign? I'm like, that's for women and gay men. A few moments <laughs> later. Ryan, what is your sign? Scorpio. Oh god, you fucking that, dude, I man. am too. Oh, fucking gay. <laughs> like everybody Men talking know that. about their sign is gay. <laughs> we not, had this I'm conversation. Saying, I'm answering what it is, you dumb fuck. If somebody asked me what sign, I'm like, I don't about, know. I don't know anything about what it means or what it fucking sounds. I just know I'm a Scorpio. I think it's super gay. <laughs> and oh, I took that man. person. Approximately <laughs> 10 hours <laughs> later. Hell 199. Can I ask what your zodiac signs are? I'm a Capri Sun. <laughs> Capricorn. My zodiac sign is uh, Capricorn. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, I'm a Sagittarius. Me too. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> she asking all everybody. I am a real <laughs> Aquarian. An Aries. I'm I'm a typical uh, Aries. I've started many businesses. I'm entrepreneurial. No ripper. What's your zodiac sign? Uh, hell, one on not Aries. And so I'm a Gemini. Uh, Gemini. I'm the best. Scorpio here too. Scorpio. Oh, Scorpio. God. I'm a Cancer. I'm a Libra. I'm kind of a Libra, and that, that basically means everything I say is fair and balanced, right? I am a Leo. I'm double. Leo. Leo? Gabe? I'm a Leo. Leo. I am a Leo. Leo's, yeah! <laughs> That's right. That's right. Matthew. I'm a I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. Uh, I'm pi I'm fish. I'm like a cough. Fishy, fishy, Pisces. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we said, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the most disappointing of the... All right, yeah. It's all good. Uh, I'm a Taurus. I was born in September. You're a Virgo, yeah. You know. I think it's... I think it's Virgo. Yeah, technically speaking, Virgos are uh, the most serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a Virgo. Sophie, you started a big rant there. That's just how I feel about it. All right. That was that's really good. really fun. That, that was really, really good. good. Yeah. So I shout out to no Sophie. Idea. Yeah, that's really so, good. So Vera's a fellow Scorpio. I am a Scorpio. Now, yeah. My my favorite edit of that was men who ask other men their signs are gay. Cut to you. <laughs> yeah. like, right after that yeah. stream. Right. What's your sign? Yeah. <laughs> That was amazing. Oh, it's fantastic. Shout out to Sophie. That's good stuff. Uh, El Pancho Libre for Canadian 2. Dumb, dumber, and dumbest. Thank <clears> you. <throat> That's us. Uh, Ryan Kennel, spelled like that with me, <laughs> brings brings back I bragging rights rights. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, need to get bragging rights back, Dan. We need to bring that back. Uh, Captain Cook. Spelled like that. Uh, fun fact, giving self-censored reviews for early access or for corpo pre-approved press bits will hurt you and your audience, but the big yeah. corps will love you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, Jay's half-Asian son for two bucks <laughs> says, Daddy? <laughs> Is that just an Asian person with Down yes. syndrome? <laughs> no, and it looks like Jay? Somebody, somebody, uh, oh. who, who upload? No, like somebody found this picture and uploaded it to Twitter. And they were like, look, this, I don't remember who it was. It was one of the girls, I think. Uh, somebody uploaded, and they're like, it's just some Asian guy. It looks like Jay. Blabs, it was Blabs. Okay, it was Blabs. I, I assumed he had Down syndrome. 
Uh, you're getting canceled for the hundredth time now. <laughs> well, I'll be all right. I don't think they can. I don't think they can figure out a way to to, to <laughs> wrangle up the crowd, wrangle up the mob. Uh, filthy casual for five. Alec, your mom is the best at anal. Never seen a butthole like hers. Greatest butthole in the world. Read in Trump voice, please. <laughs> oh, I can't do. I can't do a Trump voice. Um, as big of a Trump fan as I am, I can't do the voice. So I've never been able to do the the whole uh, imper. Everybody else tries it, and a lot of people think they're good at the Trump impersonation, and they're really cringy. And then uh, other people are fantastic at it. But oh yeah, everybody tries it. I don't even try. Um, I started this because I didn't even know what you meant. Darth Morgoth says, "Ryan, you sick, but good fuck." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh no. Uh, my cum smells for five. Sup, bigots and bagheads. When's the next fight for democracy? Man, you guys, that seriously. We got to get master. Vera to play. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will buy it. I will download it. It's I will so play good. it. It's such a good game. It really it is. It seems like it's really great. It There's is. so many games that have released recently, though, like Dragon's Dogma 2, Rise of the mm -hmm. Ronin, Peach, Stellar Blade next month. We just got the Suicide Squad Joker DLC that they want to force you to pay $10 for, yep. even though they said it was free. No it's... one's going to play that. I know. Uh, My audience <laughs> wants me to play it, so I might be bullied into the suffering. You're going to be, so gonna be we'll one see. of 300 people. I had, on I had to play the Suicide Squad, the main campaign, <laughs> which was... A cringe fest, but we'll see. Uh, El Poncho Libre for Canadian 2. Lizzo, the banana mage, should join them. <laughs> oh, no. Is that like your pawn Ponch in Dragon's Dogma Ponch 2? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because like all of the pawns are women and they're fat women. <laughs> <laughs> all 90% of the pawns are just balloon sized women. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, they're supposed to they're supposed to protect you, right? Bigger mass. Well, you can yeah, stick behind yes. them. Yeah, Human yeah, yeah. meat shield, I suppose. Exactly. Um, nom de plume for five. The great thing about lawsuits is discovery goes both ways. Yeah. That's right. True. That's true. Uh John Goats, remember for four months, we've seen we have seen the pushback in gaming from Stellar Blade to Final Fantasy VII to Helldivers 2, not allowing pride flags. Even Sony, who was crazy about no sexiness allowed, has gotten behind all those games. We were talking. I was on a critical drinker yesterday, and we were talking about the whole, uh, you know, situation with them not allowing like pride flags or pride capes or whatever. And it, it, the discussion came up about how the game has friendly fire in it. So it's like if you're playing with randos, and they have like, oh, the they flag. walk up in a pride flag. <laughs> Brrr, yeah. Oh man. Immediately, <laughs> that would create such a fucking shit show. Um. So yeah, I'm glad that. There's nothing that will be political again. As a Trump supporter, I have no desire to see MAGA bullshit in my Hell Divers game. Okay, just like if you're, you know, one of these left wing activists, you should not want any of this shit in the game. Leave games alone. Leave all of that shit out of it. Nobody. Well, cares. that's like there's a new game coming out in August called Dustborn, and I've covered it a few times, but it centers around disinformation. You use words as weapons, and they said it was inspired by political events in 2016. So they have massive TDS. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm, Lots of, of games course. like that coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, Bablo Blah for 10. When are these companies going to learn? Not today, probably. Well, as I said, I talked about this yesterday on Drinker Stream too, but it's like the gaming side, this is why it's different with the gaming world because the indie gaming market is massive compared to Comics, movies, television, all of that. They have their indie oh, yeah. gaming market, but like the, the indie gaming market in the gaming side of things is massive. So you can honestly walk away from AAA gaming completely and have all the games you want with the indie yeah. market. Now, what we need to do on geeksandgamers.com, because we are revamping our website and everything like that, I've talked about this. I want us to try to highlight more indie games so that there's kind of a central focus of Stuff like that, along with, obviously, we're going to cover everything on geeksgamers.com, but if we can focus in on covering more indie titles and giving people more information about indie titles in a central location like that, I think that's a huge positive for yeah. what we can do. So that, to me, is how a lot of this will shift, because if enough people walk away from AAA gaming over the course of time, if they can find alternatives in the indie market, 
that's going to yeah. force their hand. Well, there was recently a game that came out called Last Epoch, and they had a lot of ex Blizzard like developers on it because it's an ARPG, and it was fantastic. And that isn't quite indie. It's like it's indie ish. It's more of like a double A game, but it saw massive success because of how poorly something like Diablo Four has gone on, and it just highlights how strong the gaming market is, even without the AAA companies, without the you know Xboxes and the playstations putting out all these exclusives there are fantastic indie games coming out and i know that like we've all been waiting a million years for hollow knight silk song who knows if that will ever come out but like when that comes out that's also initially started as indie and that's moving to a more like double a area there's mm -hmm. really amazing games that are releasing that are not from the main companies like yep. the biggest companies in triple a Absolutely. Yeah. And even when it comes to gaming in general, e even triple A gaming is way more segmented than yes. like the film Hollywood. industry. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you're talking about one town that runs fucking everything where you've got you've got game studios all around the world that yeah. if they did feel like they had finally, hey, we've had enough of this shit. We're just gonna kind of ignore that. They would yeah. be able to. And I feel like it could turn around fairly quickly because then a lot of other people would see them not not buying into the bullshit and being successful. That's what's going yeah. on with Korean developers at this point. There are so many South Korean studios that are doing amazing right now, like uh, Shift Up with Stellar Blade, and then we have like Pearl Abyss and Cacao Games. They have games like Black Desert Online, Crimson Desert, um, Vindictus Defying Fate is also another game, like really amazing games. And of course, we're, we're also talking about like Pal World came out, Hell Divers came out. There are just so many amazing titles that are not from these mainstream AAA devs. Um, very well said. And the, like, Vera knows her shit, man. But you're you're stuck on G and G now. We're bringing you back a lot. So, I try. Uh, I mean, I yeah. cover I cover three <laughs> topics a day, five hour live streams of games. This is what it, it is. I All right. try my best. Shout out to let me see who sent this to me. Nikki of the North, I think, is who sent this to me. We have we have the Dan Vask clip right here. Uh, so here we go right here. You've been locked for 10. It's for you, Dan. Ever thought about getting into wrestling? I could train you. I tried to train my son. He had no skills. Sat there and let himself get knocked out. Shameful. Yeah, I'm sorry that you that your son sucks. But yeah, uh, wrestling. I. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? Because I said his son sucks. He's the one saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, but, do us all. Do I'm us all. I'm actually concerned. No, let me answer the man. You keep laughing. <laughs> Google Chris Benoit. Make sure you get the correct spelling. Uh, okay. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, Chris Benoit for 10. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of uh, just a uh, rite of passage here at g, &G Yeah, so. that's okay. <laughs> uh, jaded Fett for eight months. Jeremy is a fig. Ryan has poofy hair. And hi, Vera. Great to see you here. Wow, hi. Yo, what a nice simpy <laughs> member chat. Yeah, um, why yeah. not? The, the sarcastic <laughs> image is real. It is. Uh, the sarcastic mailman member for six months. Love the streams every day, guys. Found Vera about a year ago. Love her videos. Hypnotic wow. is a must to hop on at some point. Hell yeah. Thank you, sarcastic yeah. mailman. Cerberus member for 11 months. Senator called out crap on U.S. budget bill. $1.5 million to game on New York to expand the gaming industry. I wonder who qualifies to get that money. Don't probably Diddy. Uh, Magnum Norris for 10 about time you had Vera on, you dirty bigot, Jeremy. Yeah, guys, something hey, weird. <laughs> I, I, I tried to, I tried to dodge this as long as I could, but <laughs> yeah, finally, right? finally had to bring her on. Uh, D. Holland for five. Trent used the term "appears to" regarding black girl gamers. He was careful in yep. his language as to not get sued, so they can try and fail. But I, I don't even think it was like, I don't think he was careful so that they wouldn't get sued. I think he was. That was just. What it was. It wasn't like they expected that to happen or like trying to protect themselves. I think he's just looking at it he's like, yeah, that's what it appears to be. Because it's yeah. tough to make a declarative statement without a lot of other facts. And that's yeah. just he was very the way careful he with his wording. He was yeah. very careful. Deliberate. Yep. Um, Slav's free talk for five. Great to see Vera here, who I just discovered the other day, uh, from uh Melanie Max video. Oh, nice. Love seeing my YouTube feed crossing together one nine nine. 
if you oh, slav. Yeah. Uh, Bush and Ryu Cat for five. G and G guys, glad you brought Vera on as a future co-host. Hey, Vera Cat. Vera loves the convention, <laughs> so invite her out to a signing. Yeah. I, I assume, like Vera Cat. Vera, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, you like conventions? Um, I go to some conventions. I don't go to a lot of conventions because there's not a lot on the East Coast. I'm in Boston, so there's not a lot going on here. It's kind of like uh, empty and uh, dull. Yeah, we we actually we went to Boston one time, did a little small meetup. Yes, um, and I remember, and I had messaged Ryan like two yeah. hours after. I'm like, you didn't tell me, <laughs> and he was uh, like, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know you lived there, and that's when I did <laughs> yeah. the. Uh, that's when I did that one fucking video from what's that piece of shit town we went to, the witch town, Salem. Salem, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I I know what store you went to. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Bad store. <laughs> so, yep. And that that's when I like did that video. It's like Salem sucks. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just did a, like a rant video and showed a really shitty bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and basically just you're gonna, you're on, gonna get doctor disrespected yeah, i just <laughs> i just i just shat on the entire fucking town and to this day i have people coming in to be like you don't even live there you don't know what it's like <laughs> like it is very defensive because some facebook page full of boomers shared my yeah. video about yep. how trash their city is yep but, that's that's salem oh man uh, good stuff Superfly for five psa arc the animated series is terrible does the game no justice? They made a lame girl. They made a lame gay girl boss. Well, what are you gonna do? Uh, animated Andy member for eight months. What's your next double date for Hell Divers two? We don't know. We don't Thursdays know. are typically the best days for us, but the next few weeks are going to be pretty hectic because we are doing the Vegas meetup, uh, traveling, and everything like that. So uh, definitely wait until after Vegas, but I think we probably can get something rolling uh, then. But Thursdays are typically the, the days we do that. And again, if you guys that didn't get a chance to see it, so, and I know we have a lot of channels, and I apologize. Um, so Ryan was on his RK Outpost gaming channel, first time he's posted on there since like for probably months three or four and months then, and then yeah. i have my d-day cobra 199 channel where i do my gaming streams um yeah. so and then Jay was live on too. kick yeah Beardo was live on youtube kick. and kick i was yeah. live on kick we had i just do all my content going. on youtube i just do one stream on a one line of content on one channel <laughs> i cannot fathom running 10 channels <laughs> so you don't have like a kick or rumble or anything well, like i that? have them but i but just you don't have do the multi streams yeah okay. yeah no i don't really i had tried for a while but they did not go anywhere and i just keep my content on youtube for now but i do have them okay fair enough um, over on speaking of rumble contemporary compendium for two forget godzilla fist kong two minus one is where it's at hail the 199 yeah minus, i want to watch minus one again it's it's such a it's great so movie. good uh mark a reality for a buck where are these idiots going to file their lawsuit if i'm the defendant with no contractual relation with bgg generally they need to come down to my jurisdiction here in florida fed or state um vault 95 survivor for a buck important service announcement jeremy is gay uh, thank you. Not as Good gay as know. Dan Vask. Good to know. Not as gay as Dan <laughs> Vask. Uh, Matthew Hammond for two. <laughs> Louis Gossett Jr. was great in Stargate One as or Stargate SG One. Yes. R yes. He was also he was also in the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I didn't, even, right. didn't even think yeah. about that. Didn't think about that. Was yeah. he? He was great. Jeez. Ministry of Wrong Think for twenty. Think about how much of GG2 is self-inflicted L's from their own racist tweets, not understanding the Streisand effect, admitting in DMs to having a narrative. The irony that we're playing GG2 on game journalist difficulty. Yeah. Well, uh, GG2 is uh, is completely now. Again, I wasn't around for GG1, so I'm you know I I, I got accused of that a lot. Uh, but I'm like I don't even know what the hell you're talking about because I've been people Star have Wars. people have tried to say I was part of GamerGate one. I was 14, guys. Okay, I was too busy on Xbox Live shit talking oh, people. Yeah. Okay, I was not GamerGate one. Okay, there's people that you try to put that in like them. yep yes. yep <laughs> yeah that's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Gamer Gate, it, the, the landscape is completely different now in oh, terms yeah. of who has voices, the, the main YouTube players, the main websites, all of that. Kotaku is dying. Polygon is dying. I do think IGN, for whatever reason, has definitely shifted uh, and they've stayed above a lot of this stuff. But I, I don't 
think that that's going to last forever, but at least they are shifting to some extent. So they're not as caught up in everything as Kotaku and po Polygon and The Verge and all these other garbage tier sites. But yeah. yeah, with just looking at all of the landscape of of content creators and and how Twitter is now owned by Elon Musk, the everything's changed now. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think that he's been doing really good with Twitter. I still think obviously there are some things that he needs to change and tweak, but overall it's gotten a lot better. I mean, it's still kind of a cesspool, let's be honest, but it's decent. Yeah. Uh Dimaj and I for two. Sup, Ryan, Jeremy. Hey Vera, hail chat. What's up, Dimaj and I? Uh Hi. El Pancho Libre for two. Master Cheeks is canon. No, <laughs> it's not canon. Poncho, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Uh, Darth so Racer for five. Matt Walsh told me the other day, let's talk games. I told him to call Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Car 7th Legion for five pounds. When you still believe Lord of the Rings films are best, what would all of you recommend I go from there? Especially when it's in Ryan's option, we kind of get on. Okay, what? When I don't really know what you're saying. When you still believe Lord of the Rings films are best... What would all of you recommend I go so for? Like, what if, what if you never watch movies in your fucking life? Are you asking us for like, I don't, I don't really get yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do think the Lord of the Rings movies are the best movies probably ever made. Uh, okay. They're not my favorite, but you just have to look back at the, the way they're made. Beyond that, I don't really understand what you mean, though. Go, from that. go on Netflix and like binge watch Suits. Binge watch <laughs> Suits. That's what I Are you that's talking what I've about fantasy now. specifically? That would be my question. Or is yeah. he? Or is he asking like, should he read the books? Would is he saying like, should I go from there? After, I have a whole know? shelf of every Tolkien book up there. So, yeah, well, I, Gary's gonna be a fan yeah. now. So, I, oh yeah, I love Tolkien. I'm I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. If you want like film recommendations or what, but Nolan movies. I mean, you've already reached peak entertainment. There's nowhere else yeah. to go besides yeah. down. Yeah. Just give up. <laughs> Never yeah. watch a movie give again. Up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Daddy is thunderclad for two. I'm just here to simp for Ryan, hey, obviously. Of, of course. Hey, listen, yeah. we have to... I, I want to make this point, okay? This is right here. Gamers are undefeated. All I'll Hell say yeah. is Matt Walsh back down real fucking quick, Okay. You know, like Matt Walsh is the type of guy who, why does this guy keep calling me on my streams? Hang on. Why, why do you keep calling me while I'm streaming Valiant Renegade? Because <laughs> I never pay attention to the time. I thought y'all started at noon. <laughs> Damn it. We usually <laughs> are done. We, we, we are, we, we usually are uh, done at this time, but we've, uh, we've got a few super chats and a wonderful guest. But we were talking about a lot of stuff surrounding uh, certain things that you're uh, knowledgeable on. Well, uh, what I was calling you about was, uh, well, let me know if you're available Monday <laughs> evening. And as far as uh, the, the, the cat's out of the bag on having received the cease and desist letter. And, uh, well, we'll be showing it this weekend and a special live show Monday evening if you can make it. All right. I'll hit you up afterwards, bro. Take care. All right. Bye. I keep throwing Valiant on my live streams because he keeps calling me. So, um, but yeah, but back to the Matt Walsh situation, he backed down quickly and he even said it. He's like, of all the backlash I've been involved in, like this shit is crazy. Like, well, I said remember, publicly. yeah, he had faced a lot of backlash when he said anime was satanic and that yeah. was like a year ago. So he, and he faced leaned a lot into of backlash. It, he, he, he did. He, he yeah. leaned into that, but he did not lean into the gaming stuff. He's oh, like, you no. know what? And I, I, I got that. And again, we did have a good conversation. It was a very brief conversation, but we did talk. Yeah. I got the sense that if, just from a tonal standpoint, I got a sense that he's like, yeah, I just want to be I just want to get away from this gaming thing because it, it was an avalanche, I think, for him. He's well, like, it also yeah, I'm, was... I'm about to be in a bigger controversy yeah. with Candace Owens, so let's just ignore <laughs> this one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gamergate 2 is not for the lighthearted. It is not. It is a very heavy conversation that's going on right now because it le leans back to Gamergate 1, which was about ethics and journalism. And we clearly see that the industry didn't change for the better during the past decade because of Gamergate 1. And now we've got Gamergate 2 starting and there's th the media is pushing the same narrative of, oh, it's this big harassment campaign when it's not. It's just about consumers being educated. And that's who they hate the most is an educated consumer. Yep. You're and, right about that. And, and even though uh, obviously the same issues are present that were happening 10 years ago, 
I think that at the heart of it, right, exposing who the games journalists are, that has had a very lasting impact. And even though it took a while for people to understand it, for the reputations to be destroyed, that is the reason we are where we are now. Because a lot of that conversation continued into 2016 and 2017 and the fake news and mainstream media. And and it's all built. And that is collapsed in on themselves. And I think that we have that what happened 10 years ago to, to blame for now where we are and having these game devs and game journalists come together. But now they have no power because nobody has any respect for them. Yeah. Right. Well, I had posted this thread not even that long ago of the timeline of the past few months. So August 1st, they announced Feminist Frequency was shutting down. And then in October, Niche Gamer released an article highlighting Sweet Baby Inc.'s existence, which brought a lot of attention to the company. And then January 29th, Sweet Baby Inc. Detected was created. January 31st, Suicide Squad gained notoriety and kicked off the backlash. And then March 1st... Sweet Baby Inc. actually blew up. And then that was GDC week. So it's like the main entity Mm -hmm. of Gamergate 1, which was Feminist Frequency, Nita Sarkeesian, they closed Feminist Frequency. And then just a few months later, Gamergate 2 is kind of happening. And I'm not like saying like Cabrutus or anything planned that. It's just such a coincidence. If she would have just hung out for another year, you know, it could have been been right back in their ball house. But but I I think that really it was just the happenstance of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League being dog shit and it being involved with Sweet Baby Inc. And that was a game that had enough like enough eyes on it that weren't just hardcore gamers or anything like that. It was a lot of eyes because so many people played the Arkham game. So many people were pissed about what they did to Batman. That's what got the attention. Sweet Baby couldn't handle the negativity. Then they stepped in it. And And it's escalated to the point where Take This, which is funded by Homeland Security, is putting their two cents into Gamergate. Like, it's just insane the way that this has blown up. Homeland Security funded site is attacking extremist gamers. (laughs) It's a wild story that just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And with it being an election year... It will not slow down. Like these stories are not going to slow down. You're going to continue to see this type of stuff happening and the controversies and the nonsense. So do not expect this to die down. It's not going away, at least through November. We are dealing with craziness and the fact that Elon Musk keeps tweeting out about it. That just sends it to a whole different stratosphere at that point in time. Um, And there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of creators you're going to get to uh, learn about and find out about through this whole process. Uh, the next Ryan Kennel is out there. The next toxic Ryan Kennel is out there. Yeah. So, I've been creative. told I have a lot of internalized <laughs> misogyny. So watch out, Ryan. I'll come for your job. Be careful. <laughs> I, I, I better. Um, but yeah, internalized misogyny is the best place for it to be. Um, Bonesaw <laughs> is ready for five. Anyone else remember that weird BP Diddy's assistant reality show from back in the day? That show makes more sense now. I don't remember a, that. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, stuff out there. Fifty Cent's been tweeting a lot of crazy stuff right now. But his yeah. ex, his ex was like a sex worker. Yeah. And now, and now he's suing for sole custody of the kid or some shit because she was fucking a bunch of people with Diddy. I, I don't know. Yeah. The world is imploding right now. <laughs> it really is. Hey, I'm ready for it to end. Sup man for two. Jay Z reminds me of Green Alien from Heavy Metal. He reminds me of a a lesbian. Uh, that's what he looks like when he does his when he got his hair all like long mm-hmm. and shit. Um, Sophie for two new guest, welcome to chaos. What's your sign? Well, you already found out. Yeah, yeah. you found out. It's true. Um, Cole Hauser for two. Good morning, my riggas. One nine nine. Yo, Joe, praise Ara. Thank you. Uh, Magnum Norse for ten. I was chilling in El Paso till my RK outpost kicked in the door. I'm awaiting you to save me, Ryan or Vera. Please, God. <laughs> I don't know what I can do. I'm not in El Paso. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Chris Boltz for five. Luke Gossett Jr. Damn, one of the OG magical. Nah, it's too soon. <laughs> it's too All right, soon. be good, sir. Thank you, Chris Boltz. Uh, Gen X Memories for five. If you never saw Louis Gossett Jr. guest appearance on Jefferson's TV, you should watch. It was hilarious. Um, Japanese Demon Lord of Beer Loose for, for five. I hear tomorrow Kathleen Kennedy will announce a new Star Wars project being made by P. Diddy's personal assistant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Udite for two. Looked up your B day, Jeremy. You're a Pisces, just so you know. Okay, wow. I don't, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> oh, so you were wrong the entire time? I don't know. No, I don't know if, uh, I think that when she clipped that, I think I was just making like a sarcastic comment of like, oh. I'm a whatever. I think Sophie can clarify. Uh, Tobias for 10, just because I'm a furry doesn't mean I'm a Leo. I'm a Leo because I'm a July kid. <laughs> the furry part is extra. <laughs> also, been dealing with the anemia for about a year now. Just Oof. maybe we might find a reason. I Damn. hope it fixes it, buddy. I, I don't know. Not sure what's, what's going on. But Magnum Norris for 10. Vera, I'm a Scorpio too. Nobody cares. Nice. Uh, I, I agree. I don't even care that I'm a Scorpio. So yeah. preach. Uh, Thaddeus Thunderclad for five. Last night's stream was my first time seeing Helldivers in actions. I have a sudden desire to crush some bugs. If only I had friends to play with. I know. Well, I, I have no friends, so I don't know what to say. I'm just going to have to do a solo run, guys. One step at a <laughs> time. Buy the game, then find friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fastback for two played a thousand hours in Arc, only one episode of Arc show. Yeah. Sooty <laughs> Thunder doesn't he? Doesn't he look? I, I, I think he looks like he's got Down syndrome. We need a side by side. We actually we need uh, X-ray girl on one side and Jay on the other. And this, uh, like, this is their child. <laughs> oh, man. That's uh, just too good. That's too good. Sooty Thunder for five. We want hunky, heroic men and curvy, badass women in games. Hell yeah. Yep. That's um, what we need. El Pancho Libre for two. Lizzo's main attack is Godskin Nobles <laughs> fat rolling. Oh, no. I hate the gods noble. Stop trolling me with that. It's PTSD at this point. <laughs> uh, Ace, Ace Shinigami for five. Ace Shinigami. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, you, you struggled through it a little bit, though. I, well, yeah, I did. I restarted. Uh, for five, I swear the amount of people you known I've you know I've been watching years is great. Hail the fellowship and hail the 199. And hi, Vera. Glad you're over here. Hi. Vera's fantastic. She's uh she's getting invited back. So uh look cool. at this Godzilla's Grease was poor Mark. <laughs> when you said the X-ray girl and Jace. <laughs> well I, that's that's the life. Sorry, Mark. Uh you, your your wife is one of the only Asians we know, so of course she's gonna be involved in all this matchmaking. Mm -hmm. Uh Sir Hat for Five, I want to highlight a free indie game called Hollow and Break that came out today. I'll have to check it out. Hollow and break. Well, hollow times break. Hollow. I haven't, yeah, I haven't heard of it. Uh, Sadikar for two. I'm a Sony pony, but I need an Xbox in the fight. All right. Mm. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't need an Xbox. El Pancho Libre for two. It went from triple A to triple ass or quadruple. <laughs> uh, Bone saw is ready for five. What can be used for a positive in this one instance? Call the Stellar Blade devs ableist for not putting in a one hand mode. We need it for reasons. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, listen, we know Eve is sexy and celebrated. We don't need a one hand mode though. <laughs> about to have dudes We're walking are... up and down the ladder five times in the skin suit. <laughs> You're about to have dudes that are playing one handed and like um, getting just the right spot where their fucking controller's vibrating for some reason. You're going to get to see some freaky shit with Stellar Blade. Oh, no. Spider Claw for five. Vera, official member of GNG win. Just don't be around when Beardo reads Super Chats. Your head will hurt. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Rob for five. Jeremy, excited that Chris Nolan is being knighted? Um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm glad Nolan always gets to recognition I think he deserves because, uh, you know, I like how he spelled man. it like that. Like it's just getting dark or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> white boy gamers for two. We just need separate group for each race and gender. <laughs> uh, fair yeah. point. Filthy casual. Um, Jesus. Does the carpet match the drapes? That's a question oh, for me. It's a question for me. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, can confirm. Can confirm. Um, B, <laughs> B grows for five. Down with the patriarchy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Magnum Norris, member for 12 months. Ryan, you don't know what it's like to be pooped on every day. By the way, I live in a urinal. Wow. Congratulations. New okay. every day. 
We're at that uh, point of the, where the super chats are going to be like, Vera's me. Yeah, I'm probably not going to return to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm out. She's having, yes, good, she's having a good time, and now she's yeah. like, oh, I'm done. I have places to be. Yeah. We get to this point in the super chats where it gets really weird around here. Oh, or, or Roscoe for five. Ryan's starting to read super chats like Beardo. That's rough. <laughs> Uh, old Renaissance nerd for five. Digstown is one of my favorite movies. If you haven't watch, seen it, watch it. Prayers for Louis Gossett's family and friends. Hail one nine nine. Hail the fellowship. Yeah, yeah eighty seven is a long ass life. Um, yep, so. you had a good life. A lot longer than Ryan's gonna make it. A lot longer than I'm gonna live. <laughs> Beardo's secret illiterate racism for two. Fun fact: Vera and Melanie Mack are the same person. True. True. Yeah, she just puts on a wig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> white boy gamers for two. Matt Walsh has a superior beard to Jeremy fair don't everybody yeah most people uh bone saw is ready for two happy good friday as well guys thank you yes good for easter on sunday yeah um sad car for two love i was gonna say yes we're both on fnt me and ryan are both there today i'll be there um sad car for two love ryan but he never fails to be an ignorant pickle I, I did my absolute uh, best to try to interpret your chat. I don't know what you mean. You just clarified it right here. This next, this next one just came in. Um, I asked after watching the great Lord of the Rings film trilogy, what do I watch now? Be it fantasy, sci-fi, or such. All state a must-watch film, not main stuff, please. Only movies? I mean, you could watch like Dragon Slayer. You could watch Legend if you want something new. Or of course, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I was going to say, watch Game House of the Dragon. House yeah, of the if, Dragon yeah. is if, really if you, good. I don't know how, if if you just watch House of the Dragon, you've never seen Game of Thrones. I don't really know what your experience would be like. But, it would be fine because it's, yeah. it's 172 years earlier, so... I, I just feel like there's character. a lot of narratives and like characters that remind you of characters actions well, right, because and places they have and like yeah, the yeah. they have like the dagger which has the prophecy of Azora High and the prince that was promised. So it does tie back, but I I really think that you could watch House of the Dragon and then watch Game of Thrones. You could watch them in either order though. Krull is also a good movie, of course. Blade Runners, sci-fi. Equilibrium. I mean, there's, there's tons. Watch Equilibrium. Equilibrium That's, is really good. Actually, yeah. Equilibrium is fantastic. Fantastic, and it's something that flies under the radar a lot of people. It's not a mainstream movie per se. Uh, right. It is excellent and very, very underappreciated. I, I'm going to name a movie that has nothing to do with fantasy or sci-fi, but it's really fucking good, and I haven't watched it in a long time. I'm going to watch it this weekend, The Departed. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's a fantastic right. fucking movie. So. Yeah. Yeah. Magnum that Norris is. for 20. Matt Walsh is a punk. Thanks. Whew. Um. Thank you for the $20 super chat, Magnum Norris. Magnum Norris. D. Important. Holland for Canadian 10. I was working at Bioware during Gamergate 1, and I had to keep my head down because of the support on the feminist side of all that. I'm better now, no longer in the Hit industry. Hit me up. Hit me up. I'm on Twitter. Go. I'm on Discord. Slide into her DMs. Yeah, slide into the DMs. <laughs> there you go, D. And by the way, um, if you're still watching, uh, Vera Dark does have a YouTube channel. She does great work over there. Um, so we have been dropping links to her Rumble and her YouTube in the respective chats over there. So make sure you go and subscribe yeah. to her. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, El Poncho Libre for two. Time to pay your misogyny tax, g, &G. Yep. Respect whammon. Yep. My chat has to pay misogyny tax to me when I stream. I respect <laughs> that. Uh, take her for five. Microsoft Copilot let me down. I asked it to draw a bidet cobra, which I imagine as a cobra head sticking out of a toilet. So it's basically <laughs> a skibbity toilet. It didn't work. Um, Haran, member for seven months. I once walked in a dark room and I said, man, it's Vera dark in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Tommy No Figure for 199. That's not Jay's son. That's Wee's son. Wee's son. Thank you. Uh, Beardo's Wet Wipes for 99 cents. Thank you. Aaron James for five. Will G&G &G try nostalgia game segment of pre-2004 uh, games? Mario Party, GoldenEye. I bet Jeremy's the one who always chooses odd job. G&G, &G, acquire Vera. Yes, Dude, do it. Wire out. We need to play Contra. It's what we need to play. We yes. need to play Contra. Ryan has never played Contra. There's a good Contra we collection that came out on the Switch. Yes, recently. there is. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah. yeah, and then there's this new Contra game that just came out. I have only played a. I've only played a little bit of it, but I want to play Contra with Ryan and uh, uh it's, And then 
Broforce is another game that became a meme oh, yeah. uh, in our community for a long time. But Broforce is actually fantastic with multiplayer stuff like that. How do you feel about the new, uh, I think it's the Marvel 6v6 like rumble game that they're coming out with. They just I, announced it. Yeah, I heard about that one. Um, I don't like is it it's almost like a like a Smash Bros. It's it's kind of similar. Like, it's yeah, larger, um, it's larger groups, but you yeah. can do the like 2v2 or like the 3v3, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. I'm always like every time they try one of those games like remember when PlayStation Battle Royal All-Stars came out? Uh the yeah. and it just was like the idea sounds amazing. The reality was that game sucked, at least for me. I didn't think that game was good. But like the idea of Kratos being in a type of game like that. So we'll see how the execution is. Well, it's like Fortnite does that now is they will add mm. every character under the sun and give them the special abilities. Yeah. So I feel like companies don't want to create their own like Super Smash Brothers or Rumble type games because of that. Yeah. River Miles for five. Jay has down Pooh Bear syndrome. <laughs> Uh, Magnum Norse for 10. God damn it, Vera. I'm still here in El Paso. My hole has been violated by Godskin nobles. Help. Wow. <laughs> I think Vera's the reason we're getting all these fucked up chats today. To be honest. Yeah, it's her uh, fault. We we'll blame her. Um, all right, guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> uh, Lee Cranmer, member for 12 months. Bite me, Ryan. Xbox is best box. Mm. The best box you've ever had is an Xbox, and I feel bad for you, Lee. Um, <laughs> but I have an you. Xbox mini fridge right there. I, I have one right there, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Jay's half Asian son for two. Drunk three P. Is it way? Drunk three P. We. Drunk three P. We. <laughs> It's funny watching you try to say it over and over. <laughs> I'm like I don't know what that. What it's You've tried to be. like four times. It, if now. you if you if you're Have entertained by people if you're entertaining people reading super chats bad, just wait till you see Beardo on main event because yep. it is brutal. Oh, I've I've seen. Oof, it's yep. brutal. Uh, Beardo's wet wipes for two. Vera, I'm here if you need me. Wow, thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Uh, Luciano for five. Been watching you guys since the demise of Star Wars. And Vera, since she was talking about the Gal Gun remaster not going on Xbox. Love you guys. <gasps> yeah, that was like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Gal Gun is such an amazing s series of games. Unlimited power for 199. Satakar, try Dragonheart and Dark Crystal. Yeah. Um, take her for two. Is it too soon to meme Gary as that ship captain? The one that <laughs> ran into Baltimore? No, it's never, it's never too soon. Um, El Pancho Libre for two. R.I.P. Sex Box. Yeah, well, Xbox is still alive and not so much thriving, but still alive. On life support. It is yeah. on life support. Um, and fucking the insurance is about to say, hey, we're not paying for <laughs> we're not paying for this <laughs> shit anymore. It's time to make a decision. Yeah. Uh, Magnum Norse for 10. Jeremy Shills for Fortnite. Geeks and get. <coughs> I dude, I love Fortnite. So uh no only no build. Actually, so I played Fortnite for the first time last night after Hell Divers in a while. A while for me, but um we accidentally moved into to build mode and I'm like, get the fuck out of there. So again, if they I take just, no build away, I will never yeah, play Fortnite. I, I could build never mode. get into Fortnite. I tried for a while. I just can't I just can't do Have it. You I play Apex no Legends. Build? Have you oh, I, I haven't hate, tried no I, build, but I, I hate Apex because Apex it's not is Titan great. Ball. Titanfall is it is better a Titanfall than Apex. universe, and yes, Titanfall is better, but it's still part of the same universe. It's, it's a dollar general Titanfall, <laughs> but that's what, what it is. What, what do you mean it's a dollar general Titanfall? It, it's gotta have the same running? mechanics. Where, no, it doesn't, it doesn't have wall running. No, but Revenant can climb walls infinitely, y yeah, so but it's, it's still, kind of the same. It's, it's not the same, but uh, I have tried. I, I, I played, see, I got hyped up with Apex Legends because everybody was telling me, Oh, it's a Titanfall it's universe, good. and else. I do not like it. It's it, because it represents the fact that I don't have a Titanfall 3. That's yeah, what it is. It represents true. that I don't have a Titanfall 3. They threw 3. Titanfall 3 away because they were originally going to make an Apex Legends single player game. And then they said that was actually turning into Titanfall 3. And yeah. then they scrapped it. Oh, it's, it hurts. And then thank you, Dr. Disrespect, for ta playing Titanfall 2 for the first time like a week ago. Yeah, Where that was cool. Where the fuck were you when, the, when we needed you? 
Doc, yeah. but it was cool. It was cool that he played it. But I'm well, like, he's we... making his own game, so I think he's yeah. trying to highlight games that are in the similar vein because he's making that vertical battle royale, which I think is really fucking cool. Yeah. But I think he's just trying to highlight games that are similar because it is very Titanfall esque. I, yeah. if you have the, the reality is Apex, like folks on Apex, makes them more money than a Titanfall 3 would, and they know it. So, yeah, true. oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll, Apex I'll, Legends made them a billion dollars last year. I, yeah. I, I can understand why certain games or movies or whatever don't succeed. I can understand why others that probably aren't as good do succeed. There's just a lot of variables. I will never fully understand why Titanfall one or two failed. I, I will never understand it. I so completely agree. Good. Especially I completely two. agree. I remember when Titanfall 2 came out and everybody hated it and was so angry at it. They are good games. They They're are phenomenal. solid. They have solid gameplay. The graphics still hold up. The gun arrangement or assortment is amazing. I just don't know why they decided to follow the Battle Royale fad. Obviously, Apex has made them a lot of money, but they need to go back to single player and Titanfall. Yeah. Yep. But hey, it is what it is. If you have not played No Build Fortnite, I want to get you on I'll have a match. To. I, no I've, Build is a game changer because again, I've I have never played No Build. I, I hate, hated the building. I, I was like, "There's no way I'm playing this." I, I, I actually, hate. the couple times I tried it with the building, I felt like I felt like king of the fucking world when I could just do really simple shit in it. I like, it's like to make oh my just god, like I'm getting giant, shot. Yeah, it's like I'm getting shot. Let me spam the walls. Oh my yeah. god, I'm protecting yeah. myself. Yeah. Holy you make fuck. a freaking maze to yeah. try and get your I, enemies yeah. to go through. I was it. always very anti Fortnite because of the building, and then I randomly uh, it, I I heard about no build, and I was like, well, this looks cool, and yeah, I, that's when I started playing it. I haven't stopped. Yeah, I haven't no really. Build. I think I tried it twice, and. I just never picked it back up, but I will try no build. All right. So today has been awesome. Vera, you are certainly going to be invited back. You are Thank awesome. Thank you. Tell everybody. Me, ah, I fuck you. Get invited back. Uh, right, yeah. Fuck you. Uh, Vera, <laughs> tell them about your channel. Tell them where they can find you um, and uh, shill away. Over on YouTube X, I have Rumble. I have Odyssey. I have all those accounts. Uh, obviously, YouTube and Twitter, my main platforms are x is my main platform in tw in youtube um i am a gaming live streamer a pop culture commentator i've been talking a lot about localizers uh sweet baby and narrative consultation companies and then i cover you know shady business practices in the industry like the dragon's dogma 2 situation where people were pretty upset about the microtransactions and all the different stuff like that so i try to cover as many things as possible on my channel Good work. Oh, yeah. Definitely go support her. She's fantastic. So good to have you on. Thank and you. Uh, Ryan, what what positive message do you want to leave our wonderful audience with today? Uh, I'm going to read the rest of their super chats. I have <laughs> nothing positive to share. Uh, <laughs> just some bullshit for five. Uh, Ryan, you read a lot of super chats. Come here by the campfire and rest. I'm good. Uh, SBZ for two. Ryan, it's already past 30 minutes. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. I had to wake up really early today for a dentist appointment, so I'm dragging. Oh, the dentist is um, awful. It's especially awful at eight in the fucking morning. Yeah, that um, sucks. Dan Detmer for five. Hot take. Stargate 1994 is better than Dune Part 2. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen Stargate, but I, I really like Dune Part 2. I like Dune Part yeah. 2, but I still like one more. Uh, El Pancho Libre for two. What was released around the same time as Titanfall? Couple of Call of Duty, something. Right? Call of Duty and Battlefield, basically yeah. the first Titan, or I'm sorry, the second Titanfall. Titanfall One was a, basically an Xbox yeah. One exclusive. Yes, that was on the 360 and all that, but um, and it didn't have a campaign. So while I loved Titanfall One and I played it the day it came out, I understand why it didn't really have a lot going for it because it was a new game and didn't have a campaign, um, and it was an Xbox One exclusive. Titanfall Two came out. And it came out right at the same time as, in between Battlefield and Call of Duty. But Titanfall 2 had a campaign, a phenomenal campaign, along with the excellent multiplayer. And uh, But for whatever reason, it just never... It, I mean, it, it's not like it did terrible. It sold several million copies, but it just didn't do the numbers that you would expect um, yeah. something like that to do. Well, I think it got kind of overshadowed by games like Destiny, and then we had all of the Anthem drama around that time as well, and that absolute failure. So that was around Destiny 2's launch. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Lord Botha for 199. This is why Ryan has no time to spread democracy. Good point. <laughs> uh, Laura Lynn Lance, member for 15 months. 
Hi, y'all. I'm 50 today. Only a few days left in my birthday month. Love your hair, Vera. Thank you. I appreciate it. And happy birthday, Laura. Yeah, happy uh, birthday. Magnum happy Norris birthday. for 10. You're weak because you're not talking about Elden Ring. Uh, <gasps> Elden Ring is the best game of the fucking century and the Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to be fucking bomb. If we Damn, can have 10 hyped. if we can have 10 Last of Us remaster, remake, redos, I can count the Elden Ring DLC as game of the year and I'm doing it. There you go. Respect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Black Tailgate for 12 months. Titanfall failed because the first didn't have single player and Titanfall 2 didn't market enough to single players. It's it's yeah. true. Um I mean, it's just it. It still, I felt like word of mouth should have taken off on it. I mean, oh. if you remember when Titanfall two, when the beta I'm came out, I'm tired of hearing you talking about the death of your fucking beloved franchise, Jeremy. It's Fuck over. You. It's Fuck done. You. No more autopsies needed. All right. There's Tobias. been rumors. There's been rumors circulating about them doing something with Titanfall. It's probably gonna be some see, shit mobile see. game. It's you're gonna get screwed over, and it's gonna be know, some gonna bad mobile it. game it. where it's, it's like be worse than Elden that Snake Eyes movie. Yeah, it's so, like Elder uh, Scrolls Blades, where you can only play for five minutes and then you have to pay to play more. I'm so sad about Titanfall. I All hope right. that yeah. happens. Actually, Tobias for five. Hey Vera, me and Red would play Hell Divers two with you. Yeah, I think I, Red is his I'm furry to play. Friend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Master Farce Theater for two. Elden Ring's mid as hell, Vera. Shut <laughs> up, theater. You don't know anything. Uh, El Pancho Libre for two. Gollum is still better than Elden Ring. No, it's not. <laughs> now my chat is trolling me. Guys, no, El Elden Ring is superior, and the Gollum game was a piece of trash. And with I that... only gave it a two rating because it says Lord of the Rings on it. That is it. <laughs> so, so does uh, Rings of Power. That doesn't make me give it a It gives one. it at least a one star, <laughs> and that's the best I can offer. Uh, and that is it. We're that all That is up. it. All right. So we have Friday Night Tights today. I have Cobra Cast tonight on my D-Day Cobra channel. Vera Dark was an awesome guest. You will see her more in the future, but if you want to see more of her now, you can go over to her channel and subscribe over on YouTube. We're dropping links in the chat. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Vera. We appreciate it. Ryan, thank you for all your positivity and warm wishes to the uh, community and humanity in general. You're just a great person. That's yeah. what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you on Friday Night Tights. Have a good night, and we will talk to all of you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. I'm just going to end it now, Ryan. I'm going to.